I've modeled the parts for my butterfly and now I'm ready to assign materials to them and animate them. I've got a wing over here. I've got a body. I'm just going to move the body down a little bit. I've currently got snap to points turned on, so I'll turn that off. Move it down slightly. And then I'll make a duplicate of this planar trim surface. I don't want to duplicate the curve, just the surface. So I'll select the curve and hide it. You might need to use the outliner or just get in really close. Now I've got the curve selected. I'll just add it to that curve layer I made earlier, which is currently hidden. So if I right-click and choose Add Selected Objects, that curve is now hidden as well, because it's on this layer. Okay, so the visibility is off. Now I just want to make sure that for this surface, the planar trim surface, or the wing, I want to verify that its pivot point is exactly on this x-axis with the z-value of 0. And it currently is, because I haven't moved it. But if you had moved your wing, then you would need to make sure that its pivot point was on this axis line. I'll hit undo. We're ready to make a duplicate of the wing, so I've just got that wing selected. And I'll go to the Edit menu and choose Duplicate Special Options. I would recommend that you choose Edit Reset Settings just to restore the dialog to its defaults. We want to be making a copy, not an instance in this case. We'd like to mirror the wing so that it has basically it's a Z value of negative 1. We want to mirror it around the XY plane. So that means we need a Z scale of negative 1. So Z scale, negative 1, click Duplicate Special, and now I've got another wing. Not a bad idea to rename our objects. Select the body, go to the channel box, double click on the name and call it body. Select this wing in the channel box. I'll rename it. I'll call it wing left. And press enter. And then the third one, wing right. I can test to see if they're working right. So I'll just select a wing. Grab the Rotate tool and rotate, and that seems okay. How about the other one? That seems okay, too. Good. But if I select them both at once and try to rotate them, you'll notice that they rotate as a unit. So I'm just going to plug the rotation value of one of the wings into the other one. That way I can just animate one of them, and it'll save me a little bit of time. So the wing left, I'm concerned with its rotate x value. Okay, I'll press Z to undo that. Wing right, I'll select, and I'll just plug in wing left's rotate value in x. I'll just reverse its sign. So I'll choose rotate x in the channel box. Click on the name, and then go up to the channel box menu and choose edit expressions. In the expression editor, I'll choose wing right rotate x here and middle mouse drag it into the expression area. I can use control and the mouse wheel to make that text bigger. And I'll just set that equal to wing left dot rotate x with a semicolon. Notice the case sensitivity here with a capital L and the dot a lowercase r, and a capital X. When I click Create, close the window or minimize it. Now if I select Wing Left and rotate it, then the other one will rotate with it. What we want is for it to go in the opposite direction once again. So let me undo that. Go back to the right wing. Back to Rotate X and go to Edit Expressions to get that window back up. And we'll just put a negative sign in front of wing left rotate x. So just a minus sign, meaning that it's going to have the inverse value. So I'll click edit. And now if I select wing left and rotate it, then the other one goes with it. Cool, so that'll save me a little bit of time. So I'm about ready to create some animation. 
Let me just add a material to these wings first. I'll select them, right click and choose assign new material. It'll be a Lambert material. Just to keep things simple, and I'll call it wing shader. Just enter, and then just give it a different color. If you were texturing your models, then you would need to do that at this stage or doing any animation. Very good. So this will be a very short animation. It'll only be 12 frames. I've got plenty of time in my timeline, and I'm only animating wing left. So I'll start on frame one, grab the rotate tool, bring that up to, let's call it exactly 60 degrees. Type that in. I just want to key that channel. Right click and key selected. So I've got a keyframe there on frame one. I'll go to frame seven and rotate down. Let's call that exactly negative 40 just to keep things clean. Negative 40 degrees. Enter. Select the name and then key selected. And at frame 13, I'll bring my rotate X value back up to 60. Press enter. Select the name and again, key selected. So now I've got a 12 frame cycle. And you'll notice for a 12 frame cycle, the first frame is on frame one, and then the identical frame will be on frame 13. So that's 12 total frames. If I set the end of my playback range to frame 12 rather than 13, then we won't see that keyframe duplicated. In other words, we won't see frame one played twice because frame 13 is the same as frame one. So if you press play, you'll see some motion. You might want to double check to make sure that you're seeing it in real time. So right click on the timeline and choose playback speed. Play every frame max real time. I'll also want to check the graph editor and make sure that looks good. So with the wing left selected, I'll go to Window Animation Editor's Graph Editor. Rotate X and I'll press the F key. So it's okay. If I wanted to have a little bit more ease in, ease out, I might select all these keys and set them to flat tangents. That'll give a little bit cleaner cycle. So if I rewind and play back, it's looking better. Great, so I've got my animation. I'll go ahead and choose File Save Scene as Butterfly 03. Next, we'll be looking at the Snapshot tool to make multiple copies of the character.